And it's red in the center and blue all around With a ribbon of gold in between And it's bigger than Texas and flatter than Spain And it's the best country I've ever seen Driving through the Atherton Tablelands in North Queensland, I got a call from a woman called Margit to say, come quickly, Jeffrey's ready for dinner. What else could I do? <laughs> Obligingly, Jeffrey waited for me. That's him there, a Lumholtz tree kangaroo who drops in for a feed from time to time at Margit's bed and breakfast. Not an everyday sight anywhere, especially not from the bedroom of your B&B. &B. I can't whistle them in. They just, they just, they appear and but it's very fascinating. Then when they do come, I mean, the paddy melons come in of a night, you know, they, they come in because it's evening and they like a handout. But, uh, you know, something as special as a tree kangaroo, he's got, he's a wild animal, he's got other things on his mind. Whilst he's, he's pretty food orientated, there is hormones that is probably more important. So if there is a male to be chased off or a female of boundaries to be looked after or a female that wants attention, um, yes, he, he hasn't got time to come in. But then when he does and when people are around and see him, it's, yeah, they're usually blown away. Geoffrey was a baby when he came in. He lived, basically, he lived down my front. I mean, he was only 300 grams when I got him. All the tree kangaroos that I've raised were either uh, from roadkill mothers or dog kills. And probably almost equal numbers. Is that right? Yes. A lot of kangaroos could possibly have a chance of running away from a dog that's pursuing them. A tree kangaroo hasn't. They're, they're very slow on, they're the ground. slow on the ground. The roadkill, of course, is a big problem right through the tableland. Oh, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We've tried to put up some signs and, well, they've probably improved the uh, image of tree kangaroos in as much as at least now people are aware of them, which, you but know... Not the numbers, you don't think? Um, no, the locals still are in a rush to go to work in the morning and, yes, I'm afraid we have too many road kills. Have you always loved the animals? Is that... I'm a zookeeper by trade, so yes, of course, I've, I've always ah. been passionate about animals. And I mean, from a carer's point of view, um, it's, it's very exciting and it's very challenging. I like carrying them with me when they are, of course, tree kangaroos you have to carry down your front because they are so three-dimensional. You can't just stick them in the bag. They climb out of a bag the moment they wake up. But this little man was very sad when he first came in. Not only did he lose his mum, which was obviously traumatic at this age, mm. and very often people think that, that the really, really small ones are difficult. And yes, in a way they are to raise, but they haven't got that incredible bond that some of the older animals have. And some of the older animals just simply want to die. And to pull them out of that is, and I really feel that to carry, it's important to carry them. People might think I'm, you know, little old ladies just, you know, need that sort of thing. But, and he also had very bad bruising on his feet. So he would have been in a lot of pain. Hey, but he's much happier now. So how does Margit juggle being an animal carer and running a B&B? My, my B and B is, you know, is not that, <laughs> you know, it's not a 24/7 a job. You know, it's I fortunately get the type of guests that um, that accept the fact that animals are first. I mean, mind you, I get up, can get up very, very early in the morning if people want very early breakfast. I usually do the animals before then, just before them. And it's nice, people like staying here. The whole house is theirs. I only take one lot of people at a time, even if it's only a single person. I won't take, I don't fill up my rooms, you know, it's just, it's very individual. It, it, it works well with people, I think they, well, they because most, most my guests are nature interested. Spain and it's the best country I've ever seen.